Hi everyone, so we are going to start working on the Suzuki Intruder over the next couple of weeks and I wanted to document the process for a couple of reasons. The first one being uh, there doesn't seem to be that much information on YouTube regarding the Suzuki Intruder VS1400. There are some bits and pieces out there but I want to do a full catalogue of uh, a teardown of the bike um, to stripping the carbs, to emptying the engine oil, to all of the little bits and pieces that I had to learn originally. I wanted to document the whole process from now right, and th right through until spring of next year. It would probably um, serve me quite well to have a video sort of log of how I'm taking things apart so that if I ever get lost, I know how to put them back together. I'm not a mechanic by trade. I only know things that I've learnt by doing them or by asking advice of people that know more than I do. So if you ever plan to follow along any of these videos, please bear that in mind. I'm not a professional. Uh, I'm a professional tinker, we'll call myself. <laughs> so yeah, today we're going to take off the seats and the um, and the sissy bar and the tank so that we can start getting down to the carburettors because that's going to be one of the first things that we take out. A few things to bear in mind, the bike is not completely stock. Whoever had the bike before me had done some work to it. Some of it good, some of it not so good. So certain things might be different for you. Just use your common sense if you are following along that certain things will be different for you than they are to me. So let's get to it. On a lot of seats, what you'll get is um, you'll have a quick release nut here, which is kind of like a thumb thumb release screw. That hasn't th this seat doesn't have that. It's actually been fixed with a um, a Torx nut and a 12 mil bolt. So I've got to take this off. But hopefully, if whoever had your bike before you, or if you bought it brand new, this should have uh, some form of thumb screw for easy release. And this thing never likes to come out. Ugh because it's not been seated properly. It's not, um, it's going straight through the fender. It's going through the metal of the fender. So the, um, the thread on the, on the bolt is constantly grinding against the fender. There we go. That's it, give it a wiggle. That's it. So this is the seat in question. This is the rear pillion. I'm pretty sure this is not stock. Um, this is obviously aftermarket. Someone's put this on to shape it to the right size. If it is stock, um, this has been broken and someone felt the need to try and fix it. So, here we go again. Let's try and get this bolt off. This this bolt here, when you're putting the rear pillion on, is, is I don't know whoever did this was just being lazy or just couldn't think outside the box. When you put the rear pillion on, it has two lugs that sit underneath this metal frame to hold the bottom end, the hold, sorry, hold the front end of the pillion seat down and then you fasten it at the rear. But in order to clamp the rear pillion seat down underneath this, you have to tighten this screw down. And when you've got the pillion in place, there's absolutely no room to get in here to get to this, this nut. So it's, it's just, it's not been well thought out. I think it's just been thrown together. It's just lazy. This is actually loose. <laughs> I'm gonna do it with my hand. I can. And that's because there's no thread locker on it. Always use thread locker. There we go. Now, when you take this seat off, you don't wanna just rip it up because the, um, the ECU is fastened to the underside of it, which I'll show you now. So as mentioned, under here is where they, the electronic box, the ECU and everything is housed, and it's housed on the underside of the seat, as you can see here. So you don't want to just rip this seat off because you'll, you'll damage all these wires here. Um, yep, there's a wire that's just kind of been threaded together. Great. Um, we can cut these zip ties, there's actually these zip ties which are holding it in place. So we can get rid of these because they're holding the, <laughs> the plugs in. Um, so hopefully yours won't have that. Yours should just be straight mounted. Uh, and then we can remove 
these plugs all together, which releases the seat. And there's the seat. Now this seat is incredibly, incredibly comfortable. Um, but the frame that someone's thrown on the base of it, this again, as you can see, I covered it in um, electrical tape to try and give it some padding because it absolutely chews up the paintwork. So we need to think about what we're going to do with that. So the bike is going to go in and get sprayed. Um, not sure what colour yet, but I know it definitely is not going to be black and is definitely not going to be white. So we'll see. We might keep the stock sort of appearance. Um, this sort of sh this sort of colour, but maybe change the shade. I kind of want it to be a bit brighter. Um, I want it to pop a little bit. Uh, it seems to have lost a bit of its intensity. So, um, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah, this is uh, th this fender is probably not going to get used again, not on this bike, but um, if it does get used, that too will get sprayed. So now the fun begins. We've taken the tank off. So this process should be the same for all bikes that have, all VS1400s that have the, uh, the stock tank and um, stock mountings and everything like that. It's very simple, it's just a Torx or as we call it in the UK an Allen key wrench it goes into here and we undo these two bolts. You don't need to hold anything on the other side with a spanner on this one because the uh, the location that they're going into is, is pre-threaded, so we don't need to worry about that. And you'll notice there's um, a couple of bushings either side, um, and that helps reduce vibration. Make sure as well, it's really good practice that whenever you remove a bolt from anywhere on the bike, that you put it back in a place that is easy to remember in the future. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second once I get this other one off. So, what I, mean, what I mean by this is, this mounting bracket here, we know that this is going to have to go back on, so we're going to be using the same tank. So I like to put my bolts back into these sorts of things, and if you can get the, uh, the mounting bushings out, just be very careful at this point because there is nothing holding the tank in place at the moment. So you want to be very slow, take your time. If you've got a friend, that's always a good help. They can stand on the other side and support the tank. But I like to put these on, put these back on here, like so. And then everything is in one location and is safe. So now that we've removed the two fixing bolts at the rear of the tank, we can start taking note of the front mounting bracket. Now this has no actual clamping system on it. It's literally a slide in and out sort of job. Um, so right now, the only thing holding this tank in place is a rubber gasket that sits inside the receiver here. Um, now before we go yanking anything off, you wanna obviously take note of the fact that you've got two pipes running into the tank. You've got your, sorry, running out of the tank. You've got your, your main fuel and you've got your reserve fuel lines coming off the rear of the tank. Now if you support the front, I'm just gonna straighten the handlebars up, make sure your side stand is down. I'm gonna lift this tank up so I can access the pipes at the rear and disconnect them. So for this, we're gonna need a, a flathead screwdriver. We're going to lift the tank up and remember we want to push a little bit forwards and we want to put too much pressure on the entire bike but we want to make sure that that front bar that's on the underside of the tank that sits in the well at the front we want to make sure that stays in place so a little bit of forward pressure and then up and under here you'll be able to see that pet lock there now you see how it's at a flat horizontal 90 degrees that means that the fuel is off so it's safe to remove these two fuel lines. If it's in an upright vertical position, the pet lock will allow fuel to flow. So you wanna make sure that it's definitely off before you go removing these pipes, otherwise you'll have fuel all over the place. So now that we know that these are off, there are some clips here that you might be able to use your hand to wiggle free. If not, get yourself some long nose pliers and squeeze them and push them out of the way. 
There we go. And now we should be able to remove the pipes and fingers crossed there's no fuel coming out. There's pipe one. And they just push fits. And there's pump two, pipe two. So now that the pet lock is closed, the pipes have been removed, we can take the tank straight off the bike. You want to support it at both ends, lift up the back a little bit and wiggle it free. Make sure you've got a good grip when you do this. If you drop this thing, uh, it's going to be quite an expensive purchase to get a new one of these. And just like that, we've stripped the top side of the bike completely off so that now we have our wiring harnesses exposed and our carburetors exposed. But now the next step is to take off these side mounts here, these side panels, so that we can access all of the wiring, which is found on my bike anyway, on the left side of the bike. So again, as you can see, we're going to be using Allen keys or torque bits to remove these bolts from the side panels. We want this size, quite a thin one. This is a four millimeter. It's as simple as that. Two of the same bolts with washers. Now the side panel will come off. And there's the rat's nest of wiring along with the alarm system that I installed earlier this year. I'm actually going to put these bolts back into where they came from for now, but it's a couple more bolts that we don't have to worry about in terms of you know, losing them or anything like that. Uh, here are your coil packs. These are your spark plug coil packs. If you don't know what these are, we'll go into this a little bit more in another video. These effectively provide the electricity you need in order to create the spark for the spark plugs that are going into to the engine. If these go bad, which can happen, especially over time, this is an old bike, it's a 97 model. If you're not getting a spark and you're not igniting, it could be this that needs changing. 